Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Glory to God. Bless the land that was slain. Pray that everyone had a wonderful weekend and that the Lord was glorified in your life this weekend. And I need to say that. Because right now, I'm telling you, sometimes even the weekend, you come right in, you need to see the doctor. Come on. Not only to get us through the week, but what has happened this past week. Come on. Is anybody with me this morning? We have a doctor that can handle all illnesses, all sicknesses, and all wounds. Today's prescription comes from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 15. And it says, Avoid it, don't travel on it, turn away from it, and pass it by. It says, avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it. Man, pass it on by. <sighs> Man, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, you often get um, questions or comments. Am I witnessing for all these years? And some of the questions you get, um, you get often some of the comments you get you get often and so one of the things that I get often is that people utilize um, we all sin fall short of the glory of God as if to pave the way to excuse them falling into sin or them continuing to be entangled in it. And you know what? We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So you know what? This is just what it is. But yet, when I hear that comment, I often think to myself, then what's the point that Jesus says that he has the power to deliver all? What's the point if the Bible lets us know that he has overcome the world and that he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world? What's the point if the Bible calls Jesus the stronger man that's able to bind up the strong man? It's as if the Bible communicates one thing, but yet on the other hand, we kind of say a different thing. And we can dress it all up and make it look all pretty using all we all far short of the glory of God. But yet, we're not looking at the whole piece of the pie because there's some underlining issues of why we would single out one piece instead of looking at the whole pie. And one thing I would say is, is that the reality of the matter is, yes, temptation is there. Yes, sin is real. Yes, we find ourselves in it. But the truth of the matter, how much effort are we putting in to avoid it? That's the question I have for our morning medicine. How much effort, energy, are we putting in to avoid it? Oftentimes we find ourselves putting more energy in to excusing or justifying why we should stay in it. But let me ask that question. How much energy, effort, time are we putting in to avoid it? How much energy and effort are we putting in not to travel down that path? Or as the scriptures say, to turn away from it and pass it on. How much are we putting in to build up ourselves to be able to avoid it, to turn from it, to pass it on? What am I doing to contribute 
Am I really giving it all? That's I want to ask that question for our morning medicine. Because this question is an examination of self. Am I really giving it all to avoid it? Man, look, we can make excuses for it. We can just try to justify it. But real talk, how much are you giving to avoid it? How much are you giving not to go down that road? How much effort are you really putting into this thing? And you know, you know how much effort you put in it. Just think about some things that we love to do. Some things, man, we put all out effort in order to obtain or in order to uh, accumulate. And our effort knows no bounds. Well, are we doing that same type of effort when it comes to avoiding temptation or avoiding the entanglement of temptation, avoiding the sin or getting caught up in all that nonsense? Or to walk in the ways of righteousness. I'm just saying, how much effort are we really putting into this thing? In the book of Genesis, chapter 39, the story of Joseph. And Joseph finds himself a slave in Potiphar's house. And he's serving faithfully in Potiphar's house. All of a sudden, Potiphar's wife trying to come at him. She, she trying to come at him for real. I'm not talking about come at him like trying to fight him. I'm talking about come at him or trying to seduce him. She trying to invite him into that bedroom. And she grabs hold of him. I mean, she really does this. And it goes on and on and on and on. And she grabs hold of him. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 39 around the 12th verse, man, he rips away from her and he, he literally runs out of the house. I, no, no, no. Literally runs out of the house. The boy got, he, he got up out of there. And I think about that in retrospect that Potiphar wife was doing all of that. And Joseph Went as far as to say, you know what? I'm going to run up out of here because I'm going to do what all it takes to avoid it. I've tried to avoid it staying here, dodging the room, doing this, doing that, uh, talking to her uh, with only specific words, short language, short communication. I tried to avoid her in the house, but yet all of that didn't work. So this time, I have to run up out of there. And I want to use that example that Joseph was willing to run, <laughs> literally get up out of there, run, in order to avoid compromising, staying, being entangled in sin. That he said, man, I'm going to run. Because if I do not run, I can easily find myself caught up in it. So I got to leave it. No, I got to leave it. I got to leave it now. No, I got to leave it now. I got to run up out of here. And I'm just saying, do we have that same mentality as Joseph that, you know what, man, I got to run up out of here because if I don't run up out of here, I can find myself easily being entangled in it and I'm not trying to go there. So if I'm not trying to go there, I'm going to do all I can to avoid it. If that takes me running, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what you think about me. Man, I got to run up out of here. I got to throw you the deuce and I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm telling you, I... 
it hits me so hard because I remember uh, some years back, I was on a basketball court, man. This guy was acting all crazy and all of this and all of that. And I felt my attitude start to rise up. I felt anger try, try to rise up in me to retaliate or come against this dude. You know what I did? I literally grabbed my bag and my shoes and I ran to my car. They were like, they were like, Piper, you, you staying for the game we want? Man, I'm out of here. I ain't say anything. I grabbed my bag, grabbed my shoes, and I ran to my car. They were like, man, what, what are he doing? What are he doing? Man, they, they did not see me anymore that day. I literally ran up out of there. Because what came to my mind was Joseph. Because at that point of time, I understood where I was about to go. And I know who I represent, and I'm not trying to compromise that. So I, I did what all I could to avoid it, to pass it on. And at that point in time, I said, you know what? This thing is getting a little bit heated beyond uh, where I can stay in the kitchen. So I need to get up out of here right now. I don't need to hesitate. I don't need to, no, no, no. I need to get, I need to get ghost. And I literally grabbed my bag and ran up out of there. Man, I'm saying, I didn't care what they thought about me. I didn't care if the next game, I didn't care uh, that they needed to pick up another player to play. All of that didn't matter. What mattered is me avoiding, not traveling on it, turning away from it and passing it on so that I won't entertain the evil, that I won't give in to the temptation. Yeah, I know they trying to take me there, but that don't mean I have to go there. And sometimes in order for me not to go there, I have to be willing to exhort all my energy so that I don't go there. Even if it means vacating the premises. Man, I'm out of this camp. Even if that means taking a day of leave. Even if that means, man, you know what? I need to go to the bathroom and pray. Whatever the case may be, I'm saying, are you doing all you can to avoid it. I'm saying, if you got issues with porn pornography on your computer, man, you may need to sell your computer and start going to the library in a place where you cannot get on publicly with pornography. I'm saying, what all are you doing to avoid it? This is how serious it is. This is how serious it is. It's serious enough that I may need to get me an accountability partner and I need to stay connected to that accountability partner 24 seven. Why? Because it's that serious. And I wanna put more energy on avoiding it than giving in to it. I'm saying, if it takes, man, you know what? Man, I'm with this relationship. Man, y'all need to stop. Maybe you need to stop going over each other's house at night, going to movies late at night. I remember my pastor years ago, he asked this question. He said, why as a single do we always choose to go to the movies at night? Why don't we catch a daytime matinee? He says, as a matter of fact, it's cheaper. See, I'm saying we got to do whatever it takes to avoid us falling into this temptation. I'm saying... If it means me cutting off people, man, I man, look, deuce. Because I'm I'm tired of going there. And I need to do whatever it takes for me not to go there. And sometimes we talk about this, we'd rather excuse it than putting the energy in it to avoid it. Jesus said, if your arm causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. And what he's saying, what he was saying was, are you willing to cut off what causes you to sin? Are you willing to pluck out what causes you to give in to that temptation? How far are you willing to go? How much effort are you willing to give? 
He was making a point to say what you're giving right now. Are you willing to give what it takes in order that you may not plunge into it? He wasn't telling them to cut off the hand or pluck out their eye, but he was saying sometimes it takes drastic things. Sometimes it took me running out of the gym instead of staying there hooping. Sometimes it, it takes me selling my computer and going to the library to utilize a computer. Sometimes it takes when I'm tempted with adultery. Maybe you need to start calling your wife at lunch. Maybe you need to go the other way so that you may not be entertained or indulged or, in, you know, whatever the case may be with this other person that's not your spouse. Maybe it's time for you to change jobs. See, I'm saying, how much are we willing to avoid it? And if we're doing it to avoid evil, man, you don't think God going to open a door for that? But the problem is never about God opening up doors. The problem is, are we willing to give that effort or that energy to avoid it? Look, I'm, I'm, look, I'm willing to apologize so that we don't go there. I don't want to argue with you. I'm willing, watch this, to pick up behind my spouse because I know it could go there. I'm willing to give the love instead of the hate. I'm willing to put more effort in trying for it to be better in the Lord than to entertain those things that are worse. How much? Are we willing to give of ourselves to avoid it? Some of us right now, I'm telling you, rather be temptation with food. Sometimes you got to get rid of all the junk food in your house and replace it with snack and replace it with healthy snacks. Yes, you have to go that far. I had to go that far. I only eat the sweets that's at my job because I've replace all my sweets in the house because I'm trying to avoid it. I'm trying to make allow it and help this temple be better. Sometimes you got to delete people's numbers out of your phone. You got to delete people's number out of your phone so that you won't be tempted to call them because they are a temptation for you. And I'm grateful nowadays we don't remember numbers anyway. They're all plugged in our phone. So if you delete it, you won't remember it anyway. And don't try to write it down. Don't try to do all that. I'm telling you, sometimes we got to do some things. But I'm asking, are we willing to give the energy that it takes in order to avoid, in order for us not to pass on it, in order for us not to go buy it anymore? Am I willing to give the energy that I be more faithful in fellowship because I keep entangling with the wrong fellowship? But are you willing to give more energy into the relationships with God and those instead of the others? I'm willing to change my number because, man, you know what? That number, man, look. I'm just saying. How much energy are we willing to give in order to avoid it? And the truth of the matter is, sometimes we're not really giving as much energy. And we know it. We're not giving as much effort as we can or that we should to avoid the temptation or the things we easily get entangled in. And so far, I'm more than medicine. What are you giving? Are you giving your all or are you just giving some? Are you giving just enough, but yet God says I'm requiring more? Are you willing to give what it takes so you can be delivered of it. I'm saying, man, I'm willing to, man, I was willing to cut off whatever. I'm willing to, man, because you know why? 
because of what he had for me. I'm not trying to miss that. I'm tired of missing that. And because of that, man, I say, you know what? Everything, Lord, I'm willing to give it all. When I first started out, man, I, I, I didn't have a job, but yet I was willing to be faithful to searching, giving all my energy and effort because I gave my energy and effort to all these other things. So why can I give my energy and effort to do the right thing to avoid the temptation. So you know what? If it meant me waking up in the morning, if it meant me catching the bus, if it meant me asking somebody for a ride, if it meant me doing this, I'm willing to give that energy, I'm willing to, to humble myself, suck in my pride, and do what I got to do. Willing to do what I have to do in order to avoid it. Man, my first job, I cleaned toilets. And I was grateful to clean toilets. Why? Why? Because I'm willing to give it all to avoid to go back into that, man, somebody better hear me this morning. I'm saying we talk about this, we talk about that, but you really willing to give the energy or the effort it takes to avoid it. The temptation does not have to have you, but it has you because we allow it to have us. But the question is, how much effort and energy are we giving to avoid it? to turn from it, to let it pass on. It requires more than what we're given. This is your morning medicine. Check our effort.